Well, good morning, church. <laughs> We're back at this again. We are not having in-person services, and so we've come to uh, this Sunday morning where we're probably sitting on a couch holding a cup of coffee and uh, back feeling like it's Groundhog Day again. Uh, well, here we are in the fall and coming to you over whether it's cable on Westman TV or whether it's online Facebook Live or however you're tuning in. We just want to say welcome church. The church is not a building. The church is people joined together by their common bond of life in Christ Jesus. And so we welcome you wherever you are and whether you're a part of our local body or not, we welcome you this morning to a time where we open God's word, where we open our hearts and we expect God to meet with us. And so we're going to begin with some worship and uh, we're going to have Ryan and Andrea lead us in that. We're trying to do our best to, to obey all the guidelines of the public health order. And so that's why it's just a few people here and there. And uh, the point of it all is this, that we come together to worship the Lord. So while we uh, settle in this morning, let's just open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you with confidence because of the open access given to us, that new and living way that is Jesus himself. And so in his name we are gathered, even though not in one place, we can be gathered in Jesus' name. And we come before you, Lord, and we want to give you this morning our, our burdens, our cares, our anxieties, our stress. But above that, Lord, we want to give you our worship and our thanks because you're worthy of that. You're big enough to take all of our cares. We know that. And we cast them on you. But Lord, even before that, even beyond that, you are deserving of all of our praise, our thanksgiving, and our worship. And so we give it to you now. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church. Um, hey, this is an interesting time we're in again. You know, back to lockdown I never thought that we'd be in this situation again, but here we find ourselves, and uh, I don't know if you're like me, but uh, I'll be honest, when I heard the news that we wouldn't be able to meet together this week, I was a little bit disappointed, but, you know, we are, we are trying our best to bring encouragement, and we're trying our best to be here to encourage you guys to follow Jesus, to love Jesus. Andrea and I are by no means professionals and we're not claiming to do anything today except for just bring you to the feet of Jesus and just worship God. We encourage you during the time when we're going to be singing. We're going to be singing anyways. I don't know what you guys do on your couches at home. But we just encourage you to sing along or just worship God through praying. And uh, the songs that we chose today are obviously songs about how we're not going to give up how we're not going to be defeated, how we're going to just keep on trusting Jesus no matter the circumstances of life. And uh, we just believe that God is going to be honored and glorified through this. I just have a scripture uh, that I'm going to read for you real quick. It's from Psalm uh, 121. It says, I look up to the mountains. Does my help come from there? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you stumble. The one who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel never slumbers or sleeps. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. You know, we've been mandate, mandated to wear all these masks and stuff. But really, God is our protective shade. He protects us from everything in life. And we just encourage you with that today. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord keeps you from all harm and watches over your life. The Lord keeps watch over you as you come and go, both now and forever. Let's just pray and then we're going to sing together. 
God, we pray that today as we worship you together as a body, that God, you'd be honored and glorified. And God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would come and you just cause us to turn our hearts over to you. God, we're not going to give up. We're not going to throw in the towel. We're not going to get discouraged. We're going to instead turn to you. And so, God, I pray that your name would be honored and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. to peace the storm surrounding me let it break at your name still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every wave at your name Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise, breathe, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be ever. Your name is alive, forever lifted high. Your name cannot be overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you sigh. darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Your name is a light that the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is a light forever lifted high Your name You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. 
You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. darkness my god that is who you are you are way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are oh that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are. 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 Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, you never stop working. Never stop. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You. That is who you are. 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 That is who you
stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working never stop you never stop working never stop you never stop working heavenly father we just thank you that even though we can't be together in person, God, you have promised that wherever we are, you are there. And uh, may you unite us with your spirit, even through the airwaves, even through the internet and in whatever way that we're able to be together. God, help us to know that we're not alone. Help us to know that you are with us, that you make the way where there seems to be no way. And when we don't understand what's going on, God, help us to remember that you are good and that you are in control. And uh, would you see us through times that seem difficult and perilous and um, because that's what your word promises that you will be with us through all these things, for you have overcome the world. on the mountain I felt your love within the valley and your grace it still surrounds me God you've been good to me oh you've been good to me I've seen your goodness on the mountain I felt your love within the valley And your grace, it still surrounds me God, you've been good to me You've been good to me Oh, my soul sings
inside my bones and I cannot help but praise you God you've been good to me you've been good to me oh my soul sings my soul sings Yes, Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. God, through all the seasons of our life, we just give you praise and honor and glory as we see your hand of faithfulness. We just desire, God, to give this time to you, Lord God, that you would touch our heart, that you would touch our life, and you help us to live for you. In your name, amen. Well, if you've been a part of our series that we've been doing, whether here in the building or whether online, you'll know that we've been spending a lot of time in Hebrews chapter 12, and we've been talking about the race that, that we're running. And we've been doing Bible studies in different homes and different groups throughout this series uh, that follow along with the same theme. Over and over again, we've had one basic theme, and that is don't give up. So we've talked about listening to the 
the crowd or the cloud of witnesses that surround us? What can we learn from them? How do we find encouragement from their stories that help us run with endurance? We've talked about throwing off the weight, how there are certain things that will just hold us back from running well. There are encumbrances that we have, and there is a sin that entangles. That sin of pride will trip us up every time. And so today we close out the series with this, run your race. And so once again, we go back to Hebrews chapter 12. We've been doing it in different uh, translations every week. And so this week it's the New American Standard. And here we find verses 1 and 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let's rid ourselves of every obstacle and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let's run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking only at Jesus, the originator and perfecter of the faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. We've seen that Hebrews 11 and 12 describes life for us as a marathon race, a race that has obstacles and entanglements. And it's too easy to get discouraged, isn't it? Especially when we can't see the course. We don't know all of those obstacles. They can surprise us. We've uh, said, you know, we didn't sign up for this. There, there are things ahead of us that we just don't see clearly. We might see them not so clearly. We might know there's something coming, but we don't know what it is. I'm reminded of a runner. Her name was uh, Marla Runyon. In 1999, she won the Pan Am Games in Winnipeg, the 800-meter race. She went the next year, 2000, to the Sydney Olympics. Her story is quite amazing because she was legally blind. She had a, a rare... Uh, disease that affected her retina and so she could see some things but not in color and not clearly and so she could see things that looked to her she described it as a fuzzy blob and so there was a, a fuzzy blob in front of her and she only could tell that there were people in front of her if she ran ahead of the fuzzy blob so legally blind here she is competing in the 800 meter race she said it was especially difficult, that last leg, as she would round the curve and she would be on the final leg of the race. And she wouldn't really know, except otherwise, she could listen to the announcer and to the crowd. And that would tell her that she's in the final leg of that 800 meters. And if there were fuzzy blobs in front of her, she knew she had to get ahead of them in this last leg of the race. Well, you know, that kind of describes how it is for us. I mean, I have a bit of a, 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 vis, a vision problem, too. I have a vision uh, condition as well. And so there are some things that just don't show up as clearly as they used to. I don't have the, the, the vision that I, that I once had or even maybe that I still think I do. But that's what it's like for us running a marathon race. There are obstacles in front of us that we maybe didn't see a little while back, that now they're there and we know that we're getting close to the finish line and if we're gonna run this race well, if we're gonna win that prize, we've got to throw off those weights, embrace the obstacles, overcome them, and run this race with endurance. But it's easy to get discouraged. You see, one thing we know, going into a marathon, it's not going to be easy. There's going to be a time when everything is telling us to give up. This is too hard. No one else has had this kind of pain. You didn't sign up for this. Have you heard those voices? At some point, you know that the challenge of running the race will come down to whether you're going to give up or keep going. And if I tell you that the average number of steps in a marathon is somewhere north of 55,000, and you know that you're going to get leg cramps at about 300, 
it might be a little difficult for you to even get up and get to the starting line. 55,000 steps? That's ridiculous. And we become overwhelmed and we say, not for me. I'm going to quit before I even start. And you know, in our race in life, we might want to change some things. We might want to get rid of the encumbrances that keep us from running well. That's a good thing. To have a good desire for the right things is great, but it will not be enough to get you over the finish line. Having good intentions will not get you into the race and through the race and over the finish line. In fact, there's an old saying that many of us remember that talk about a road that is paved with good intentions. Destination not desired. So then the first step to run in this race that is set before us by God is to take action on those good intentions. The first step might be the hardest, to get up off the couch and put our intentions into actions, to begin to align our actions with our intentions. Now, I'm like many of you. Over the years, we've bought a few exercise machines, treadmill, stationary bike, elliptical. All of those things ended up either in a garage sale or a landfill because their usefulness as a laundry uh, utensil uh, was no longer needed. What that means is that we just didn't use it. And it became sort of just in the way. In fact, it kind of became a reminder of our, of our failed attempts at trying to get in shape. And so a little over a year ago, once again, the intentions came. You know, we should really do something about this bulge. And so what we did is we bought another exercise machine. Only this time, we're going to use it. The thinking was, if we spend a little more money on it, we're going to be motivated to use it because it's going to really bother us that it's a waste. And so we bought this, this exercise machine, put it down in the basement, 14 minutes of running, different paces. You set the, you set the resistance and away you go. But don't quit. You got to run that 14 minutes. And you know, we did that. We did that for a while and it really helped. But then, you know, summer came. Ah, we're getting our exercise outside. We're getting our fresh air outside. That's, that's even better. Well, then this fall comes around. We go downstairs once in a while and we see this machine and it kind of, kind of, the long and the short of it is we're back at it again. Good intentions have to be lined up with actions. The first time we did it, you know, this wasn't so bad. I don't know why we put this off. But then the second night we went down and did it, I should just speak for myself. Second night that I went down and did it, I was feeling muscles that I didn't know I had. I was feeling some things that, that I just didn't feel the first time. And the third time it didn't get any better. And the fourth time it didn't get any better. And it's like, are we going to keep this up? It would seem that, that there is a, a point at which we want to give up and we have to push through the pain in order to keep going. That's why it's good to have a, an accountability partner. It's good to, to say we have, we've, we've started, we can't look back, we can't stop now, to take that first step. That's what we need to do in the race of life, and that is get up off the couch, so to speak, put our intentions into actions, and step up to the line, to the starting line. We need to align our actions. So that might mean something like this, asking a friend for help. Would you be my accountability partner? I want to be honest with you. I want you to help me run my race. And here are the encumbrances in my life. Here are the struggles that I have. It could mean uh, asking for forgiveness from someone that you've wronged. You've been intending to do it for a long time, but maybe you need to write that letter, make that call. It could be cutting up your credit card. That would be aligning your, your, your good intentions with your actions to not get addicted to debt, not get addicted to spending and, and get buried and swamped in it. It could mean turning off the TV at mealtime to talk as a family. 
It could mean setting your alarm so that you read the Word of God. We need to align our actions on a regular basis with our intentions. You know, Jesus had someone come to him and says, what does it mean to follow you? I want to follow you. And Jesus said, you know, I, I don't have foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but son of man has nowhere to lay his head. And that was a bit of a discouragement, you know. He was saying, are you really sure you want to follow me? And then he turned and he said to them all, if anyone wants to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. We don't become followers of Jesus by accident. We got to take action with the first step in the right direction by deciding to follow Jesus and then just show up. Just show up. That's what I got to do with that exercise machine every night. I just got to show up. I might not feel like it. It might not be something that I really am looking forward to or I want to do. I might feel tired. I might have all kinds of excuses. But if I just show up, if I just climb on the machine, I'm there for that 14 minutes and I'm not going to quit halfway through. Every trainer would tell you there's going to be a time in your regimen, in your workout, where you're going you're to have every excuse in the book. But what you need to do is just show up. Not just when you feel like it. You need to get over yourself, how you feel. You need to climb on the bike. You need to open the Bible. You need to show up at church when it's open. You need to just show up. It's important that we build in a habit of faithfulness in our running this race. To mix metaphors a little bit here, the Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 6 says this, let's not become discouraged in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not become weary. The next step, after the first step, the next step always becomes the most important one. Don't focus on how many steps you have left. Don't start thinking about the 55,000. Just think about the next one. Make that next step. There is a finish line. There is a harvest time. You may not see it clearly, but just take that next step. And then the next one. If you show up, if you say, I'm just here to take the next step in my walk with God, in my following after Christ Jesus, if you will do that, that is what, what Eugene Peterson, a great writer, said uh, in a book entitled it this, in fact, that it's called a long obedience in the same direction. That was his definition of discipleship. Just a long obedience in the same direction. Can you do that? Can you just focus on the next step? What is God asking you to do now? What is the next thing? Don't think about all of the things that you might have in front of you. Just, just the next step. Just get past the next fuzzy blob in, in front of you and, and run your race with discipline. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, he says, Do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but only one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may win. And then he says, Therefore, I run in such a way as not to run aimlessly. I've used this illustration before, farming background, so I think it, it kind of works, you know. If you want to make a straight line, you got to fix your gaze on somewhere where you want to end up. You know what it's like riding with an old farmer. He starts looking at the crop over here. He ends up getting a little too close to that crop over there. He starts gazing at the nice new piece of equipment in the neighbor's field over here. He finds himself a little too close there. You look back at the tracks and that muddy road and he's all over the place. Why? You always end up closer to what you're looking at. And if you want to make a straight line, if you want to not run aimlessly, you must fix your eyes only. That's what it says in the New American. Only looking at Jesus. I remember as a child before there was GPS and auto steer and all of those things in our tractors. If you were to make a line, and I didn't do a very good job of this, it took some time to learn this, 
you had to pick something at the other end of the field and you kept your, you did not look back to see how straight you were going or for sure you weren't going straight. You had to pick a fence post, a hydro pole. Don't pick a bird. Don't pick a vehicle that's moving. Pick something that is not going to move at the end of the field. Fix your eyes on that. Don't look back and you'll have made a pretty straight line. Well, you know, that's how it is for us to not run aimlessly through life. We need to fix our eyes on Jesus. There will be distractions. There will be things that will tempt us to look around. There will be obstacles that frighten us for sure. But you ever notice this? That when we're frightened, we look to whatever our source of strength is. You ever take your child for an immunization shot? or for stitches, or to get something taken out of them, a foreign object that's not supposed to be in there. What do they do? They're frightened. Who do they look to? They look to their parent. Do something. What are you doing? Why are you letting them do this to me? It breaks a parent's heart. But it's a natural instinct of a child to look to its parent when it's frightened. Well, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to fix our eyes on Jesus. The writer to the Hebrews isn't telling us to look within ourselves and find the strength, you know, pull up your bootstraps, find that inner strength and all of that. He's not doing that. He's saying, fix your eyes on Jesus. The whole point of Hebrews is that the Lord Jesus is superior to everything and everyone else. He is better and he is the only one that we are to put our confidence in. How do we do that? Well, verse 3 of Hebrews 12 says, Consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Are you tempted to grow weary and lose heart? Is discouragement knocking at the door of your life? Consider Jesus. Spend some time just thinking about what he's done for you. That's you know, we're going to maybe have some more time to do that right now. Let's use it wisely. To spend time thinking about what Jesus has endured for us on the cross. Fix your eyes on Him. You will find yourself getting closer to Him. You will find yourself not walking aimlessly, but in a straight line with Him, the author and the finisher of our faith, waiting for us. We will find ourselves drawn to him and he will impart courage into us if we consider him the one who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself we will not grow weary and lose heart what you fix your eyes on what you behold you will eventually be drawn to in fact we become what we behold you will eventually find yourself closer to Him. But you must just take that next step. Are you ready for a long obedience in the same direction, following Jesus, fixing your eyes on Him? Whatever you do, don't give up. Jesus, when He was about to leave His friends, He said to them this in John 16, these things I have spoken to you, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage. Take courage. I speak courage to you, Jesus says. I have overcome the world. So if you're just looking within, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to get discouraged and you're going to want to give up. Because the obstacles, the trials, the tribulations of life are going to be too much. They're going to be overwhelming. But Jesus says, take courage. I have overcome the world. Let's fix our eyes on him. During these next four weeks, for us, it sounds like, who knows, maybe more. We will have more time to ourselves. But let's not use that time to just be inward thinking. But let's fix our thoughts and our eyes upon Jesus. During these last four or five weeks, we've 
finished off our nine o'clock service with a chorus from an old hymn that's kind of been a theme for this series. It says this, it will be worth it all when we see Jesus. Life's trials will seem so small when we see Christ. One glimpse of his dear face, all sorrow will erase. So bravely run the race till we see Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, nothing takes you by surprise. Everything is a part of what you have allowed or, or directly brought into our lives for our own good and for your glory. And so when we come to you, we know that, that you have already made a way for us through this, that there is no trial, no trouble that need overtake us if we would simply fix our eyes upon Jesus. So we would listen to the testimony of faithful men and women who've gone before us. As we would consider Jesus and what he has done, we will throw off every weight. We will get rid of the sin that trips us up and we will run the race that you have laid out for us with perseverance and endurance. And so we say thank you. Thank you that you speak courage into our souls and into our lives. We receive it today, Lord, and in the days to come. For your honor and your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you folks. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to being with you again next week.